You're listening to the Urban Empowerment and Inspiration Station, 1680 WOKB. One of the biggest stories they've been talking about is a uh, program called the Prism Program that the government has been running now for uh, about six years. So we're going to get into that, talk about what the Prism Program is. But before we get there, of course, it is uh, NBA playoffs time. Game number three is tonight. It's actually going on right, right now while we're on the now. air. Uh, I'm sure uh, if I know Jeremy's going to have it on the screen. <laughs> Keeping it no, Keep in uh, abreast as to uh, what the score is. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll kind of check in with that and see how that's going. What do you think so far, though, game one and game two? What are you thinking, guys? What are you thinking? Yes. Uh, I'm thinking heat and five, like I said. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to stray from that. Heat and five. I'm think I'm, I still think it's gonna go to seven. I think it's gonna go to seven. My mill win tonight. The Spurs will win what, the next two games because they stay in in San Antonio and then they come back to Miami. They're gonna win in Miami. I disagree, but hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, straight t- through, baby. That was I was looking. Uh, you know how they always give out the stats uh, on the percentages of of how often pe- people win in these games, and they were saying that since the two three two era. Uh, the um, person who wins game three wins 92% of the time. And so in the 2-3-2 era, it's only been one team that has won game three and then gone on to lose the series. Guess which team? Oh, God. <laughs> what, the Heat? It was the Heat. Oh, <laughs> no, Dallas. don't say it. It was the Heat against the, in the Dallas series. Don't that was the first it. time. That the winner of Game Three in this two-three-two format actually l- ended up losing uh, the seven-game series. So uh, I don't know. Just an interesting stat. Otherwise, every other team's pretty much won. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting stat. Uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm with you guys. I think the Heat's gonna uh, gonna win the game tonight. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot closer than it was in Game Two, though. I don't think San Antonio is gonna fall by twenty again. But uh, I agree with you guys. They probably will win tonight's game. And uh, I'm with you, uh, Miss McCray. The Heat in seven is what I think. I think it's going to still go to seven. But we'll see. Y'all almost didn't watch the game the other night. Oh, I mean, I watched the game, bro. I watched it, but I don't think that's going to happen again. I watched the game, bro. You're right. When the Heat are playing at their best, you know what I'm saying? They're unstoppable when they're playing at their best. The problem is the Heat. Uh, don't play. They they take games off within these series. You know, we saw it in the Indiana series where where they were taking a few games off. I mean, and, and yeah, at their best, they they're unstoppable. But but unfortunately, they they always have them two or three games where they are just not at their best. And uh, and in, and against a team like San Antonio, you know, they're gonna eat them up when they're not having their best. That's right. what I'm saying. So uh, so let's so see what happens. Heat and five. Heat and five. Okay. Though. All right, brother. We'll see, I hope brother. so. That'd be great. <laughs> but I'm just saying. We'll see, brother. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll move on from that. Uh, a couple of news stories um, that I saw before we get uh, get into the uh, the topic of the night, this PRISM program being run by the government. Um, so a couple of things I was reading. And uh, the first lady, did you guys hear about the first lady uh, the other day? Uh, apparently, uh, some people describe it as she got gangster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What I don't do well is this. <laughs> she got gangster That's what she said. with a heckler the other day and, and pretty much told her, you need to shut it down <laughs> or there's going to be a problem. Uh, it, let me ask you this. Is she, is she right for that or was she wrong? Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. But but can so, you check people as the first lady? Though, is the question. And why? Can, if you if you can if, if anybody can check somebody. It is the first lady. The only other person who has more of a right is the president. <laughs> I mean, you, what, you got to have some benefits for being the first lady, right? I suppose, brother. I suppose. Okay, I suppose there's something. I'm to say. But I, I, I would say, I probably, if you thought about etiquette, etiquette would probably say there's a better way she could have handled that situation. That's what etiquette, etiquette would probably say. Uh, it, it you may probably disagree. say she ain't going to try no more either. <laughs> uh, or anybody else for that matter <laughs> you're probably right they will not be trying to heckle the first lady let me, anymore let me not do this they because she certainly reminded them that that she did grow up in chicago south side <laughs> south side came she let me take out these pearls real quick listen 
Uh, hello, how you doing tonight, Michelle? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. What's your comment tonight? I'm calling to say I, I support the, uh, the president's wife. Michelle, I think she was right. And so now nobody else will try her again. It was long overdue. So, um, like the one lady, I think she was a senator that put her hand in the president's face. Mm -hmm. They show uh, a huge lack of disrespect for his office and his wife not having it. So somebody had to step up. And why so not? I'm sure in the next four years that won't happen again. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I think I think they learned their lesson about talking uh, when Michelle um, Obama is speaking. <laughs> I think they will be quiet. I appreciate your comment, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I don't think she'll be questioned again. But uh, but yeah, but I think etiquette would still say that there's a, a better way. To handle that situation right because <laughs> then she's labeled the angry black woman yes. that she was fighting against since day one when yes. she wasn't yes. so finally after four years what we're five years in she's like listen okay i'm tired of it you're not going to disrespect me because i'm positive this isn't the first time this is probably the first time it's been caught on video right right that somebody has been trying her been rude to her first so she was she had a bad day see but that's see. That's what I'm saying. She to me, she's not shaking no image of an angry black woman. She just lets you know, like I'm not the one to be played with. You know, I mean, who who put this? Who's interpreting it like that? That's what I'm trying. Oh, to say. we're not. But you know, that's she, all that she fought that from day <laughs> one. That anything she did, if she caught an attitude or just said something the wrong way or looked the wrong way, they put that label out there on both of them. And he clearly isn't the angry. Black man. black man. He had plenty of opportunities to show that side, and he didn't. Yet they still had this image that they had to deal with, this perception of what black men and women should be. Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, well, I, like I said, I, I think it does at least, um, it gives those that want to talk about the angry black woman that they expected her to be, this is an opportunity to kind of harp on that. Uh, but but as uh, Jeremy said, uh, in the community, uh, nobody is uh, downing her for her actions. Uh, they're actually celebrating the fact that she has said something because it's like, well, finally, say something. Say something. Like, I know you're from Chicago, Michelle. <laughs> I know they ain't going to do nothing like that in Chicago, <laughs> Michelle. So, uh, yeah, I just, I just thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, another one real quick. Um, did you see the story? Um, about the young man, and I believe, he, if I remember right, he's in Tennessee. Young man has 22 kids. Oh, my God. 22 kids. And then uh, on top of that, he, of course, I mean, how can you pay child support with 22 kids unless you're a millionaire? <laughs> so, so as you'd expect, he's not paying child support. Um, and basically, the state of Tennessee, they say, is paying about $7,000 a month to basically take care of of his 22 children. Crazy part, the young man is in his early 30s. Wow. In his early 30s. That's crazy. Y you already know what color he is, so I ain't even gonna say that. <laughs> 407 894 You know, um, when, I, when I read the story, it's almost heartbreaking, you know, that a young man has basically spent his, his youth having babies, you know, because the man had no, he's still, you know, he's 30 something years, I think early 30s. Uh, had no job, you know, I, I don't know where he was living, but if he ain't got no job, he certainly don't have no place you know what I'm saying, of his own. Um, and then 22 children all being cared for by the state, $7,000 a year, you know, $7,000 a year, seven times 12. What's seven times 12 over there, Brother Jeremy? I know you know, brother. Oh, I know. Ain't you the math teacher? <laughs> Eighty-four uh, thousand. Okay, eighty-four thousand. Right, just, just checking. Eighty-four thousand dollars a year is the cost we're talking about. Um, I just, you know, it, it's a sad story to see that. Excuse, what's that interrupt? Uh, Miss McCray is is trying to watch the game. <laughs> technical difficulty. Uh, it's a sad story to see that you know, young black man has the state caring for every single child that he's put on earth. And essentially, obviously, he has almost nothing to contribute to the situation. Um, you know, to his to his defense, he says he's very really well aware of all his kids and knows their names and apparently in, in their lives in some way, shape or form. I guess you can give him credit for that. But come on, man. 
22 children and you ain't got no money? <laughs> that's, that's hey, a lot. Go get a job at McDonald's or something and contribute to the situation. Something, brother. Well, well, you know, you know, saying, at least you can that, pa- pass out Happy Meals to the kids th- so they can eat a couple times a week. You know what I'm saying? Something, bro. Something, something, man. But that's I, just I crazy. You, he ain't even got to go get a job. Just go babysit your kids. <laughs> <laughs> they the mamas need some help, huh? Yeah, all them. They the mamas. Need, how many? How many baby baby mamas? They said it was. Um, I believe it was in the uh, thirteen or fourteen. So this, but this is my question: the situation. Child ten through twenty two. <laughs> what was the logic with these women? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, come on now. Thank now you. I'm, I'm not absolving the brother of his part. But well, I mean, well, I in ten I'm pushing it. You know, ten I'm being like, all right, you know. But really, child five through twenty two. <laughs> at what point were they like, yeah, let's have some more? Yeah, three. I, I mean, if I meet a dude and he's like, yeah, I got three kids by three baby mamas, I'm not. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Nope, you're not touching. Well, you never know I what situation. Because let, let's say you give two to youth. You know, let's say okay, you have one, you're sixteen, you're seventeen. It happens, yes. and then one. You know, although you should be married, one you might have been in a, in a committed relationship for three years or so, and you have another one. That's three right there. So I'm mean, not going to say knock nobody. I mean, especially if they're taking care of them, you know. But when you get to, to me, five is a lot, not to be married with family. But when you start talking about, two, I mean, after 10, though, like, what, <laughs> what woman is like, after 10 is like, yeah. I'm going to lie with this man, and, and, and we not going to be careful. Mm-hmm. Right. That now, we ain't, even go, we ain't even going to talk about 18. <laughs> Come on, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I mean, what, what is the logic here? That's all I'm trying to say. What is the logic? Clearly, there was no logic on anybody's part in any of these situations. Clearly. Then number 22, they need to take it up to Bellevue or something. I don't know. <laughs> something is wrong. <laughs> something is wrong, brother. Something yeah. is wrong. I, I just want the young brother to get his life together. Um, like I said, you know, a, a, unless he's a millionaire, he's never going to be able to take care of them kids like they need to. But get get some kind of job, bro. Get some kind of job and, and, and do something financially for for some of these kids so that the state don't have to spend $84,000 a year just to take care of your kids. You know, and I'm sure they're spending more than that, but that's the number that they threw out. But, uh, but yeah, I just hurt my heart just to see that, that kind of story out there. 407-894-1680. Uh, is the number 407-894-1680. And one last story here um, before I jump to this PRISM program set up by the government. Um, Of course, right now, the biggest thing happening in Central Florida is the George Zimmerman trial Um, is happening. We are on day two of them trying to uh, find potential jurors. Um, So far, from what I I read today, uh, no jurors have been selected so far. Uh, they've dismissed um, in somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 or lo- a little over 70 or more. And uh, they talked to about, uh, I think the number is about 10 or 12, somewhere in that. Um, and nobody's been selected. Uh, th- there's one little quote, though, they said from one of the, the potential jurors that I thought was hilarious. The lady talked about moving down from uh, Chicago recently. Um, and she said that, you know, she hadn't seen a whole lot with the story. Um, because she just got cable, and since she's got cable, she's been all about her reality TV. <laughs> and even <laughs> commented on how much she loved her reality TV. Wow. <laughs> when I read it, I mean, obviously they didn't they didn't say if the juror was black, white, or, or what, but I assumed. <laughs> I would say this. At least she was honest. At least she was honest. That is true, sir. At least she was honest. But she talked about how she loved her reality on TV. Her line, like, yeah. I've oh. been paying attention, and she get on the jury. She get on the jury, yeah, exactly. Well, we'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. I'll say this. If I was the defense team, I'd have no black jurors. <laughs> I'm sure they're trying their very best to make that happen. There's, there's been a couple. They, they actually had uh, uh, apparently an older uh, middle-aged black man they described him as uh, today who was uh, really um, kind of counter. Apparently, he's a big Sean Hannity fan. and uh, mm, Sounds like Jimmy Smith. <laughs> oh. He's a big Sean wow. Hannity fan. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he, he thought Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson coming down uh, to Sanford uh, was, um, was a shame 
a saber rattling apparently is the quote he called it um and uh so that was interesting uh, from again they haven't selected anybody so obviously he didn't make it but uh but I thought that was interesting. Jimmy, uh, are you secretly man. telling us you've been questioned for this jury? I have not Is that been what you're saying? questioned for this jury, oh, Miss McCray. Okay. I, I, got, I wonder how long this jury selection is going to take. They're saying about two to three weeks, bro. Yeah, that's Two crazy. to three weeks. For six people. For six six people and four it, alternates. Right. So ten people all together. Yeah. And they're going to basically, they're calling in about 500. The process apparently is they fill out a questionnaire and then they sift the, the lawyers sift through the questionnaire and then begin to pull in potential, potential jurors and then question them further but uh yeah so far i think they like i said they've gone through 70 or 80 they're calling about 100 down 100 people down a day they say um over the next few uh few days and, and weeks i suppose so we'll see what happens man but uh day two of course everybody's on it uh every major news organization is in sanford uh nancy grace is on top of it again and uh we'll see what happens but they say two to three weeks for jury selection and then perhaps another two to three weeks for the trial to um to be to uh manifest itself and and perhaps get uh at least get to the verdict um or the jury deliberation anyway so we'll see what happens man we'll we'll keep a close eye on that and uh definitely pay attention to the results to the results no riots right we're not going to have any riots based on this right i hope not i doubt it i hope not i hope so too i hope so too so so the news story that has been dominating headlines uh for the last last few days here um is this prism program now for those that don't know the prism program is apparently a obviously secret program that the government put in place um about 6 years ago now what the program does is it sifts through um, U.S. phone, um, U.S. cellular phone conversations um, for information that may lead them to a terrorist is what it basically does. Um, and so it basically picks up and, and kind of records. They, don't, they say it doesn't record the actual conversation. What it does is it records the time of the conversation um, as far as duration and then also records where the conversation is coming from. Um, and, and they're checking again for terrorist um, actions or terrorist conversations or and that and that sort of thing is what the prison program does. Um, in addition to that, um, as part of the program too, they they also sift through the private information of some of your major internet companies as well. So Google and Facebook. Yahoo, they sift through that private information as well and sift through it again, looking for potential terrorist um, or terrorist attacks that may be um, being plotted against America um, is the program in and of itself. Now, what obviously someone had to leak this information. There's a, a contractor, young man, um, 29 years old, I saw when I was reading about him. He leaked this information out because he said he wanted the American people to know what our government was doing uh, behind our backs. Okay, so that's the that's the gist of the story. Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. First question is, uh, does this sound well? Well, let's get let's say this. Are you surprised that they're tapping our phones basically and sifting through all of our private email inf or private internet no. information? No. No. No, not surprised, right? No. No, not matter, surprised. Matter of fact, they've been doing it. Yes. We just found out about it. Right. Yes. Well, this would apparently this would have been a part of the discovery process in, in 2038. So they would have eventually told us. It just we were 25 years ahead of the game now. <laughs> so, so, uh, so yeah, I, I agree. Not surprised that they're tapping and recording this information. Here's the next question. Do you believe the usage of the way that they're using this information? Because what they say is... This is all being monitored by Congress. This is also being monitored by a secret court, which they refer to as FISA. Um, and, and basically, these are judges who were secretly appointed to this court and they oversee programs like the prison program. And so any information collected, um, Congress is made aware of that information. And then, two, that information has to be vetted by this court. And if the court deems this information irrelevant, then they have to get rid of it. Um, or, you know, if they say it's, it's valid information, then they, ha they can keep it. So I, I, I don't know. 
when I heard the story, I wasn't surprised that they're, they're, they're recording our information. That, that wasn't surprising. What was upsetting to me, though, is the idea of so we can everybody can get on board on a program that that basically violates our rights, because even though they say they're not doing anything to violate our rights, the, the, the issue that the young man brought forth and the reason why he exposed the program is that at the drop of a hat, you know, anybody associated with these programs can just tap into your information if they want it to. So maybe they aren't, maybe, but if anybody wanted to, it's it's as easy as, you know, a press of a button. And that's the reason why he wanted to expose the problem, he said, because it is just that easy. If you're in these programs, it's just a touch of a button and magically you can pull up whatever information you want. And so that that's where I have a problem is that they can get on board and they can unilaterally agree to violate our rights. But for for things that we're actually concerned about, uh, what's happening with Medicaid, what's happening with Social Security, what's happening with Medicare, you know, things that are going to affect our future and our lives. They don't have any solutions for but violate our rights. Everybody's on board. The president's on board. Everybody in Congress is on board. Everybody is defending the program. This is necessary. Blah, 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 blah. But wait a minute. What about the issues we care about? Oh, well, you know, that's so complicated. We can't really get together on that. That's the thing that bothers me about this whole situation. You know, get on board with something that that matters because this whole Patriot Act, this whole defense authorization bill, you know, this is all based on really allowing the government to violate our rights, allowing the government and giving them more unilateral power to to basically at will do with us whatever they please. That's what all these bills do. Um, There's no benefit to us in this. You know, because like I said, oh, yeah, they told us they're they're telling us the president is out doing press conferences. Oh, we're not doing that. We're not. Hey, we're not listening to your phone calls, people. It's okay. We're just trying to find terrorists. Really? So (laughs) so violate my rights and tell me it's a terrorist. And then I'm supposed to go, oh, okay. well, you're just trying to find terrorists, man. We've been trying to find terrorists for the last six years. And sorry, we've been trying to find terrorists for the last, you know, what what are we at? 12 years. 12 years, you know. You can't stop terrorists. Well, (laughs) you can't stop them. You know, you may be able to stop one or two things, but you can't stop terrorism. You can't just keep violating my rights to stop something that you can't stop. What you gonna say, Miss McCray? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, It, a couple of things on this. It's an issue, and what's killing me is folks like your buddies over at Fox are saying, oh, President Obama this, President Obama that. Uh, Their boy George Bush signed this into law, the Patriot Act. He got the ball rolling. And if you really do your research, this is, like you said, it's been happening before 9-11. It wasn't as, it was a little lax before 9-11, but when 9-11 happened, it's like, okay, we cannot let this happen again. So whatever we need to do, if we got to check out everybody's stuff to make sure that nobody's, trying to do anything else or plan anything else then so be it now i will say for knock on wood we have not had a large scale attack since then maybe this plan is working maybe it's not i don't know we won't know the truth we don't know what they've stopped they said they've stopped a few i think the new york subway Mm -hmm. uh something else and another event and then there may have been something that they won't tell us that they actually stopped out of Fear and we the nation just doesn't need to know that. So it's a it's a it's a slippery slope, I think. But I if it's helping to keep us from having another nine eleven, then I don't know why people are surprised. Like this has been happening since at least since two thousand one. I'm just not surprised. It it not that it doesn't bother me. I've just known. Like it's it is what it is. Is it really four oh seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number? Four oh seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. You gonna say you got something over to say, Jeremy? I'm just saying, you know, this is this is what they do. I mean one, no one should be shocked, you know. It, it's funny to me, people be all like up in arms, like, Oh my god. Right. I can't believe they actually do this. I mean to be real with you, they probably been tapping iPhones since they had the technology to technology to do it. We just found, you know, that the whole nine eleven was just the, the um, the gasoline just to put it in the law. 
you know, but they've been illegally doing it for a long time. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of people then got cases thrown out of court, you know, maybe not terrorist things, but, I mean, let's just be honest, drug charges and all kind of things because people, you talk about, you talk about on a local level, tapping phones illegally. Let's not get into what the the FBI and all them, what they do, you know. I mean, this is what they do. Like I said, but now with the, with the terrorism being such a, a big threat on our soil now, now it's like, okay, there's no rules anymore. Let's, let's just do whatever we got to do in the name of freedom, you know. But, you know, this is what we're supposedly um, took a, a Iraq apart about, right? Because the government and the, or, or Saddam Hussein and the people in charge was, quote, unquote, doing whatever they wanted to do. Am I correct? Um, well, that's the uh, the storyline, of course, is that he had weapons of mass destruction. Uh, and, that was a storyline, but and, you, you know. And we wanted to, to protect his people from his weapons of mass destruction. That's the storyline. Go protect his people. His people. That's what from, we were doing. From we're, his weapons of mass destruction. We were protecting his people from his weapons of mass destruction. That's well, we, we wasn't worried about him no, for ourselves. No, 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 no. We oh. we were afraid we were about we that. Oh, 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 oh. We, were, we were afraid when we went in there that he would use said weapons of mass destruction against us. We were, protecting, we were protecting his people against his weapons of mass destruction. But we won't go there, brother. We can do a whole hour on the Iraq war. Right, right. <laughs> whole series. But, <laughs> but um four oh seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. Four oh seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. Yeah, that, that's 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 my problem here, and and President Obama does take blame on this um, as well. He is not absolved uh, from this situation at all because yes, the original Patriot Act was put in place by President George Bush, but President Obama, just as the Congress has continued to renew the act, President Obama has continued to sign off on its renewal. So so he does play a part, and and, and to me, again. I, I'm not a George Bush fan, just like everybody in the room, and I'm sure a lot of people listening weren't George Bush fans. So, so George Bush, you know, chose to violate our rights, and he started the process, you know. But, but I, I fought the president even more because the president, you know, came in and talked about how he was going to do things different. So he does get a lot of blame in this because he, yet again, is not following his lead on his own words. He's not doing things different. That was one of the things that. The, uh, the young man who, who leads all of this, that was one of the comments he made. You know, his hope was when the president got elected that he would come in and, and change some of the um, things that were happening within the NSA um, as, you know, as such as this program and, and programs like it. Um, and then through his disappointment that uh, the president didn't do anything and has essentially continued the status quo, you know, he felt like at some point he says that this is what he had to do. This is the only way the American people are going to get to find out the truth about what their government is doing to them. Um, and so, again, that's one of the reasons why he leaked out this information. So so the president does get blame. And, and yes, I'm sure they're probably piling it on over on Fox at the moment. I haven't really <laughs> watched. Uh, but uh, but he but he does he does get fault in this because, again, he could have if he wanted to. Right. He could have signed off and said, "Nah, we're not going to sign off on this unless da 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 da." And you know then, if saying? we're attacked, then they're, oh, he's the president and let us get attacked again. Oh, the man can't win. <laughs> if he we can't get a, win. you know, it, an attack is going to happen. I mean, when when you compare us to the rest of the world, we're doing pretty good because <laughs> the rest of the world is getting bombed every day. You know, we get we get one or two a year. You know, what I'm saying we're doing pretty good. You know, and maybe it's to do to the these programs like this. I don't know. Um, I, I just think it's, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger than that. We, we have a lot bigger network when it comes to uh, spying than, than a program that specifically looks at U.S. citizens. That's my problem. This program looks at U.S. citizens. Um, and, and we're supposed to be free citizens. We, we don't need to, to, we shouldn't be checked and monitored um, as to what we're doing. Um, I just, I, I don't agree with that. 407-894-1680. Again, being that there's bigger problems in the world, bigger problems in our country. And and this they agree upon. Everything else they can't come to no solutions. We we sitting in. Oh, it's the Democrats. Oh, it's the Republicans. Oh, it's the Democrats. Oh, it's the Republicans. Oh, the Republicans. This and the Democrats that. You know, on every other issue that really concerns us, that's what we're at. But on this, everybody's on the same page. 
That, in, that, that in just bothers name, me. In the name of protecting me. the country and, and trying to prevent US another 9-11. They, they said the ACLU has already filed the case um, against the administration uh, for signing off on these types of programs. I, I'd like to see what happens with that. Probably nothing. Nothing. But, <laughs> like, come on. but I still want to see what nothing. happens with that. <laughs> I still want to see. I want to see how far it goes. I want to see how far it goes. What do you think about this young man? Is he a traitor? Or is he a hero, dude? What do you think? Traitor or hero? What do you say, Miss McCray? He's about to... Uh, Watch what you say. They're listening. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, this is not Phyllis McCray speaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, he... <sighs> He's trying to do the right thing. And I think one article that I saw, he was saying, you know, just random people in the office who had the clearance could just look up anybody. And just just because, like, if you had a beef with somebody, you could say, hey, so-and-so works for the NSA. Go look up this person for me. That's, I, I can see him saying that that's a problem. Like, if ever, it needs to be a clearance where it's responsible people and it's not just because you're just trying to be nosy. So on that level, yeah, stop that. But um, he's, hero he's, or traitor? That's he's the question. Spilling the beans. That's the question. <laughs> he can't spill the beans like that. He can't spill the beans he on the government. He huh? can't spill the beans like that. So he's a traitor. Then is that what you're telling me? Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. Four zero seven eight nine. Because they can charge him with treason. Sixteen eighty is the number. They can try to. They can try yeah, to. Yeah. Remember, he 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 has the right to counsel. Anyway, now this is the part I liked about it. First of all, hero. Uh, but hold on, I'll be back on my comment. <laughs> <Where>? <laughs> so you didn't really answer the question, Ms. McCray. You did not call him a traitor. You did not call him a hero. Uh, so that that's I don't I'm, know. You don't know what he is yet, huh? I don't know what he You're is. You're not sure, huh? I, I you know I think I, I I don't know. Maybe hero may be the wrong word uh, that that to use here. But but I definitely commend him for having the gall to to step out and and put out what the information. You know, um, that's what I, I commend him on that because most people would not. What's going on, Jimmy Shine? How you doing tonight? How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. What's your comment, sir? Oh, well, here we are talking about the president again. <laughs> We're talking about the government. We're talking about that prison program. Prison program. I call it the prison program. <laughs> uh, because, I, you know, I got to tell you. I just have always felt like every time I pick up a phone or every time I log on to my computer, I've always felt someone was listening. Someone other than the person I'm talking to, which would be you, I've always <laughs> felt that somebody is listening from the government. So that's why I go very slowly and choose my words very carefully. So um, I, I, just, uh, I just think that the, I think they're going after the wrong guy. Uh, the, the guy who busted this thing wide open, you know, they're going looking for him. Well, he, he's a good guy. He's a whistleblower. Right. He's the guy he, that's letting us know the truth. He let us know that this is legitimate and that your conversations are being monitored and listened to. He's a good guy. Why are we going after him? Right. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Right. I, I agree. And, and again, if, if it's so open and honest, what's the big deal? Uh, I think that uh, it embarrassed the Obama uh, administration, embarrassed the Obama White House. Uh, here they are. They've always say that they are transparent, uh, that they would stop this foolishness of government uh, uh, tuning in on people's conversation privately and uh, m monitoring people. They came in with that uh, assumption that, well, that's what they said. And now we have found out that uh, that system, which started with the Bush administration, has been going on for the last four years, and it looks like it's going to continue for the next eight years. Right. So, uh, you know, again, uh, that lady who called earlier and uh, was uh, that, who I call the Obama apologist, uh, you know, oh, you know, yeah, sh yeah, she should have got up. She should have. She should have put that, that woman down. By the way, the woman who got in her face, in uh, Michelle Obama's face, uh, was a lesbian. And uh, she was complaining that uh, she wanted the president to sign some form of dis some dis anti-discrimination form 
against gays and lesbians. Well, there already is a law against discrimination against gays and lesbians. So she needed to sit down. She did need to sit down. Which was the point, I think, Michelle, uh, um, First Lady was trying to make. I mean, they were at an event that was supposed to be supportive of the LBGT community. So for this lady to come back and be extra, pretty much, doing too much, she was like, wait, come right. I'm already here. Like, we're talking about this already. Yeah, her point was, hey, I paid my $500 to be here. So if I'm a little, so if I'm a little bit uncomfortable for you, you know, the elite don't like you to interrupt their conversation. They, they like <laughs> to get up there and give you a speech and tell you what's going on in their minds, what's going on, and you're supposed to sit there and keep your mouth shut. Then they're going to go get back in the limousine and fly away, see? And she just wanted to let them know that, uh, you know, hey, we're still catching some discrimination. Although I got to tell you, uh, the Obama administration has bent over backwards uh, toward that community, uh, that gay and lesbian community, uh, who should be mad is the, is the black community. <laughs> <laughs> the black community should be ticked. <laughs> Anybody, anytime a presidential candidate or a president tells you to, to uh, quit whining, quit complaining, and go put your walking shoes on and help me get reelected, if that's all you got for me, you know, I got a little bit of a problem with you. I got a little bit of a problem with you. They, they don't even know about them comments, uh, Jimmy Shine. They have no idea. <laughs> and even if they did, they're not bothered by it. So it don't even matter, bro. <laughs> it, it, it just seems to me, Brother Jeremy, it just seems to me that uh, you can do anything. Uh, this president can do anything to, to the black community, and they will love him and kiss him and hug on him. And brother, I will shine your shoes, and ain't nothing you can do ever do or say that will make me get mad at you. You are okay with me, Barack Obama? I will kill for you. I will do anything for you, you know. And you don't have to do nothing for us. And that's just my perspective on this. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. That's 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 your perspective, uh, Jimmy Shine. I would also agree with that perspective. Although I know Miss McCray. Is not on board, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I really am. You must have cameras in here. I'm just shaking it the whole time. But that's all right. That's what is America. You have your right to your opinion. I have my right to my opinion. That's why I love you guys. And there it is. All right. We appreciate you, Jimmy Sean. We'll be in touch. All right. Good now. night. So, uh, yeah, traitor or hero, you know, I don't know if he's a hero, but he definitely uh, deserves some praise uh, for being brave enough um, to, to release this type of information to the public. Uh, because I think it's something that, that we need to know. You know, it, it's one thing to know it in the back of your mind. It's another thing to get confirmation. Um, and I think confirmation was definitely needed. Uh, on, on this type of situation. 407894 I did. I, I want confirmation. I, I want to know that everything that I think is true. Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. I, I want confirmation. Everybody wants confirmation. It's just like being uh, in, in a relationship. You want you want confirmation that this is actually a relationship. <laughs> right. Okay. You, you don't want to just assume. <laughs> you okay. want to know. Move on, Dave, Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. Oh my gosh, Jerry! I, I, I think I hit on a touchy subject in here, Jerry. I didn't. I didn't. I was just making a move on. An Mr. analogy. Smith. That's all. That's move all on. I was doing, brother Jeremy, making an analogy. Jeremy, what'd you call him? Would you call him a traitor or a hero? He's a hero because this is what I say: anybody willing to risk their life, honestly, because that's what he did. Um, to bring something like this out that wasn't going to be popular, I would say is a hero. Any Anybody that's willing to risk their lives, their livelihood, their family's livelihood to expose some information that the people need to know is, 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 is in my book, you know, a, a hero. But what I think, what I like that he did, like he said, he he went to Hong Kong before he released it. So it, it not saying that he couldn't be extradited, but just the fact that he know he has a fighting chance of not facing charges, <laughs> right? Of, of, of being extradited, plus, right? Plus, they say in Hong Kong, um, you can access to over a hundred countries 
from the city of Hong Kong. So he can pretty much get on a plane and go almost anywhere in the world. Right. Um, so that that's another benefit of being in Hong Kong. And I, and I heard and I read today that he actually checked out of his hotel. So I wonder if he's even still in that particular city. Right. Um, so um, it'd be smart. But th- I think, you know, he, he certainly was playing strategy by releasing his identity. Because right. at least now people know. You know who he is. If he, he show is. up dead. So he can't come mm-hmm. up there. <laughs> Look. <laughs> under, under, <laughs> under strange circumstances. Right. <laughs> Look, this is what happened. This is where I am. If something happens to me or my people, y'all know yeah. what's and, happening. And he's definitely, um, you know, brave, if you will. Man gave up a $200,000 a year job. He was in Hawaii making $200,000 a year and gave all that up. Uh, to just to release this information, so so that that definitely takes uh, some guts because I don't know many people Mm-mm. who would walk away Mm-mm. at the age of twenty nine from two hundred thousand dollars. Did y'all year. do that to expose the truth? <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Mm-mm. Why not? I don't. Mm-mm. The truth isn't worth. Money is more important than the truth. And not even about money. Like, his life is over. His livelihood is over the way he lived his life before. He can possibly spend the rest of his life in jail, but in not, prison. At, Dr. King, he gave up his livelihood. Right. And I, you know, and I, I like to claim that I, I'm an activist on certain things, and I so stand like to claim for justice. <laughs> right. But in this case, absolutely not. I just wouldn't know because it, it, some things are wrong and some things are right. And while there are aspects to this that are wrong, it, it's wrong to be listening to everybody's phone calls and you reading emails and whatnot. But if there's some type of justification that this has stopped another 9-11, I'm not going to release classified information to the public. Just not going to do it. And I'm going to keep my $200,000 salary. And he has a girlfriend and family. Yeah. Like, he has a life. Right. Left the girlfriend in Hawaii. He's like, peace out. I'm sorry. Didn't even, didn't even tell her he was no. about to do it. Love you, boo. I wonder if he said anything to his parents, but uh, I think they were in New Jersey. Yeah, probably not. He um, said, oh, mom and dad, I'm taking a trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a trip. I'll call you later. You might hear my name. You might hear my name. <laughs> but definitely, I mean, he's not. he's definitely not coming back to the States anytime soon. No. Um, if ever, um, and uh, he will be, you know, stuck in some hole, uh, or maybe not a hole, because I hear he's had, um, he's had a lot of people, I read that he had a lot of people reach out to him that um, were willing to support him in some way, shape, or form um, to, to get ever to, to get to, I, I guess, wherever he needed to go, perhaps, I, I don't know, maybe they're offering to help him survive, um, I, don't, I don't know what the deals are, but I know that they, I read that he had some people reaching out to him to help him out. 407-894-1680 is the number. 407-894-1680 is the number. So so clearly, Ms. McCray, you, you think the idea that this prevents terrorism is worth violating our rights. Is that is that is that a fair statement? Yeah. Definitely. It, you, it's you hard with, for me to say that, but yes. You agree with that, Jeremy? Of course not. <laughs> but this, this is the issue. It's like we're not comfortable anymore, you know, since 9-11, we're not comfortable anymore. So now it's like an all-out assault. Like the Constitution don't mean nothing no more. You know, when you do something, do something, quote-unquote, against the government, the first thing they go bring up is the Constitution. Well, as soon as it's convenient for them, then the Constitution don't mean nothing no more. Oh, you know, it's new time, new days. almost like how people would like to talk about, talk about the Bible at church. Well, you know, that was old, you know, we're living in a new day. No. No, it's it's clear. It's 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 straightforward. It, it is what it is. You know, you want to conform and change to everything to make it comfortable for you, but that doesn't make it right. You know, the, the, what was supposed to be our our shining example to the world was we had principles that we stood on. But slowly but surely, every time something happens, they get a reason to take away, they just keep n- nicking away, you know, just chipping away, chipping away at every little right, chipping away at every little thing. And 20 years later, you're going to look up and you're going to be in the same position as people that we're quote unquote uh, so against. Or trying to free right, right. now. Right. We, we're so, now we're going to be just, just like them. You're not going to be able to say anything against government no more in 20 years. You're not going to be able to say anything against anybody in 20 years. Right. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, he called me stupid. Oh, that's five years right there. That's five years. 
That's why it is. You, you can't violate the rights of a person. You, p- people have a right to be stupid. That's, that's, you violate my rights. You have a right to be stupid. You have a right stupid. to be stupid. You do have a right to be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you don't deserve jail time if you tell somebody that. Exactly. You know, and, and, that's, and that's, that's the key, man. We're losing so much under the guise of terrorism. Um, it's scary. And, and to me, I get the idea of what they're trying to do. But to me, for, for just as an American citizen, um, it, this should be out in the open. You know, in some way, shape, or form, I, I shouldn't have to be "quote unquote" blindsided by the existence of this program. Um, that that just shouldn't be the case. I guess that's what's killing me that you you're blindsided. Not, not like you know, not, no, Patriot it, Act. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Two thousand one. You knew no, this no was happening. Don't misinterpret me. I'm not surprised, <laughs> but I'm saying, like I said, that this is dominating headlines because again, it's it's confirmation. You know, it's one thing to believe and have the conspiracy theory. It's another thing to have that. That cake in your face and why? Wow, you did buy me a cake today. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? you know, it's like a surprise party. You know, you, you kind of assume you're getting a surprise party, but then when you get the surprise party, you're like, wow, I did get a surprise party. And that, and that's and that's what I'm saying. This that's what this experience is like. You know, you knew they were tapping your phones, but then they then they they lay it out for you. Right. Wow, they were tapping my phones. You know, what I'm but, you, but you like I said, you already knew. <laughs> you already knew. You know, you already knew. But again, to like, me, my biggest whole sad sad agenda on this whole concept is violate my rights. No problem. We can agree. We can come to the table. I mean, they've been at the table six years. Like, yeah, this is great. Right. <laughs> six years they've been at this we thing. We all agree. We all agree. I feel you on that. I do. We feel all you agree. On that. But fix Medicaid, fix Social Security, yeah. you know, nah, that's, that's you know, I, I'm, when I, I wrote a blog and I said, you know, vote all of these bums out. <laughs> yeah. Every single bum that is in the United States Congress, vote every single one of them out and start fresh and new. Because if these bums can't do anything um, to help solve the nation's problems, uh, get them out. Cause this ain't solving nobody's problems. How you doing tonight, Evangela? Evangelina, I'm sorry. You doing all right? What's your yeah, comment tonight? Yeah, I was just coming in on the young man that he got all the information. Uh, I, I guarantee you, the Republican Party put him up for that. I guarantee you. Can you give me a reason why you say that? Huh? Said, can you give me the reason why you say that? Why would you come for everything? Ain't meant to be told. If you got a job to perform in a duty, a job, a duty, and you know this is public, I mean, this information is very crucial, why would you come forth with it? I believe he was bribed. I think he was bribed. And paid off, and that's why he got out of the country. Oh. By the Republican Party. Mm. What, 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 would they, what would they have to gain by this, though, Evangeline? Thank you, Pai. Well, I say, what would, they have, what would the Republican Party have to gain by, by exposing this information? Anything they can do to hurt Obama and his administration, the Republican Party will pull any kind of trick out the bag. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, any other comments tonight, Evangelina? And about uh, uh, Michelle Obama. Uh-huh. I think I heard you say something to the fact that uh, she shouldn't have came out the way she did. But that was the way to come out. Just to, to let them know not to be playing with her? That's right. All right. I appreciate those comments tonight, Evangelina. We thank you. Okay. Uh, so Evangelina says um, the Republican Party put him up to it. What do you guys think about that? You think the Republican Party put him up to this? No, because here's the, here's the interesting thing about this. When you're talking about how they, they're on the same page with this, like when Karl Rove backs President Obama, like he has a statement saying, yeah, this is... This is what we do. It's necessary. When Karl Rove <laughs> is on the same side as President Obama, that's that's crazy. And so that's it, when you know something wrong. It speaks to the point, <laughs> though, you, J, J, J Real, that, OK, y'all on the same page with this. Why can't we be all together on the things that really, really, really matter? Right. So I totally feel you on that. Right. And, and, and again, it's and it's, you know, solutions are solutions. Come up with a compromise on the issues that matter um, and, and stop just agreeing when it comes to violating our rights, you know, for the sake of terrorism. You know, it seems like everything for the sake of terrorism gets gets pushed through and, and everybody's on board for the sake of terrorism, Yep. you know. But the things that matter, you know, the, the fact of whether or not I have Social Security 
um, sometime in the next 35 or so years. Yeah, maybe you will. Maybe you won't. We'll worry about that, you know, later. <laughs> yeah, we'll worry about that later, you know. Whether or not Medicaid is going to survive in its current system. Yeah, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but you know, we'll worry yeah. about that. Education, we'll worry about that later. You know, you educating know. education minorities. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Stop the yeah, but we're fighting terrorists. Right. We're fighting terrorists, you know. The war on terrorism is ending, and so they tell us. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, man. We tap. Come on, man. Four seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. You know, like I said, at the end of the day, this is this is all their faults. This is the president's fault. Um and he deserves the blame. Yeah. Um, on that yes he does oh. because he may, you say he you know I, I agree based on the timeline he certainly didn't probably initiate the program no, but again he, he has signed off on the program um, continuously however many times it's been put forth to him and he's been well aware and well briefed on that program so if he really disagreed with it or if he really thought it was wrong or if he really you know wanted to change something he has had that opportunity and has failed to do so. Uh-huh. Um, so so he, he does get fault. And then again, everybody in the U.S. Congress right now are also at fault because all these fools are, are disagreeing on everything else. Uh, and all and apparently, you know, for the most part, at least the majority, right? Maybe not everybody signed off, but the majority is signing off on this. So all of these bums that are in Congress right now, <laughs> in the United States Congress the right bum. now, <laughs> the bum in the White House as well. All of these bums need to go. They all need to go. We have uh, 2014 next year. We're going to have an opportunity to send some of them bums home. <laughs> we need to send some of them bums home. And uh, 2016, we'll have another opportunity to send more of these bums home. And we need to take this opportunity so that we can get some real change uh, in Washington uh, by putting new faces up there. Maybe these new faces can do something because these bums are a waste of time. They can't agree on nothing right. but violate my rights. Yeah. No problem. That, that just, that, that irks me, man. That irks me to, to no avail. Um, violate my rights, no problem. What were you going to say, uh, Jeremy? Did I cut you off? What were you going to say? No, oh, nah, I was just just saying like what um what Ms. Craig was saying like when Carl Rove and the president agree on anything. Yeah. That's just the key indication that something is wrong. Something is really wrong here. It, it was like I mean, what more of an indication do you need? Yeah, somebody need to stand in the middle of K Street with a sign. <laughs> 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 hey, <laughs> some fragnagle <laughs> bull. <laughs> like, what else you need? <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I even had to. I, I was listening. Um, well, I didn't listen. Someone was telling me about um, Newt Gingrich. You know, oddly enough, Newt Gingrich is actually offended by the program, uh, which is surprising. Um, but and, and, and it goes trying to, to get back in the office. <laughs> <laughs> and it begs to say, you know, his, his main comment was, "Well, if they're doing this, you know, what what are they doing that they aren't? You know what I'm saying? What what else is out there that they aren't telling us? You know, that if you watch, um, there's a television program out right now called Person of Interest." Um, and it kind of piggybacks on this this the same idea of the prison program, uh, but it has video um, in the in the in the program. And so the, the premise of the program is the government created this program that monitors video um, and it basically monitors video again. Terrorism, right? <laughs> about terrorism. They got yeah. the video too. That's just not in the pro. That, uh, that's just not exposed. That's so. not exposed. Come on. You're right. That's there too. Oh, yeah. So so they exposes um, and picks up on terrorist plots. So the the point of the show, though, is that in addition to picking up on terrorist plots, it picks up on normal uh, murders as well. So, you know, man wants to murder his wife because of whatever. It picks up on that and all of that. So the point of the show is they 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 follow up on these murders that the government doesn't care about because the government's only concerned about terrorism. You want to kill your wife? Yeah, that's your business. <laughs> so they follow up on the murders that the government's dumping in and sort of forgetting forgetting about. But again, it's the same idea. You know, the, the, the one of the main characters created this program that does that. It monitors every single video in the country um, and then uses that to sort of piece together potential terrorist plots or terrorist uh, so it's just it's just amazing again um, that we have evidence. That's what, like I said, 
it's like I said, you know they're throwing a surprise birthday party, but you're still surprised mm-hmm. when you walk into the room. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't surprised. <laughs> I, still, saw, I saw the candles in the drawer. You're still taken back. I'm surprised by, by, by the, the candles in the drawer. Don't nobody smoke. There's a light in the house. Come on now. I found the cake. You knew it was Long something going on. Long time ago. In the video, you know they got video. Y'all seen Eagle Eye? Come on. Yeah. All that stuff. They like they can tap into any feed they want to. That's why, that's the benefit. See, that's another thing y'all realize. That's the benefit of everything going digital. That's the benefit of everything being connected. Why you connect this device to this device and everything, it's easier to access it. That's why. Come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all want to go technology crazy? We can go. But y'all have to understand the ramifications behind it, though. You know what I do? That's I admit that it's paranoid, but I'm, I'm going to keep on doing it. My computers that have, like, cameras on it, I cover those. You cover up the cameras? I, I cover it because I feel some type of way. Like, I just feel like somebody out there can hack into whatever my device is. And they're just looking at me. Not that I'm doing anything, but I just it just feels weird. So I cover it when I'm not trying to take a picture. Mm. Call me crazy. But maybe I've watched too many movies. <laughs> 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 we got a call. How you doing tonight, Maxine? Yes. How y'all doing tonight? We're doing all right. What's you? your comment? My comment is, you know, with this um, situation that I'm hearing that's going on, you know, it brings to mind that the gangster Yeti, out of all the ways that he evaded the law, he did not get caught until he purchased a cell phone. So it's out there. It's out there. There is. They're watching. And I also always look at that light that's on the cable box. I believe that's a camera that's watching. So nothing is hid. That's a good point. You know, the government has all types of ways to get into your privacy. And this is just another mark of the beast. We getting ready. All righty, we appreciate your comment, Maxine. I thank you for calling in. Mm-hmm. The mark of the beast. Uh, it's it's in the Bible. It's going to happen. Um, and certainly events like this um, and, and others, like you said, the whole digital connection, um, they're certainly leading us down a path where where they will be watching and monitoring every single aspect of our lives. Um, and, you know, I, I, you know, again, I just think we have to be careful. We have to be careful with um, who we put into to office and who is going to represent us because everybody that says they're for us uh, are not always for us. Uh, and clearly in this case, um, there are several hundred individuals <laughs> that fall into that category. <laughs> several hundred, including those in the White House, Mr. Kirk. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> We're winding down uh, tonight. Uh, we want to thank you for listening in. Uh, remember, you can always find us uh, on the internet, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the website, realfamilytalk.weebly.com. Uh, this is WOKB 1680 AM. This is your host, Jay Real. I'll see you next week. You can follow us on Facebook, Real Family Talk. You can follow us on Twitter, Real Family Talk, the website, realfamilytalk.weebly.com. WOKB, Winter Garden, Orlando.